Why is it that some of the largest pensions in the world are grossly underfunded? Why is it that if you look at the U.S. market, if you look at municipal pensions throughout the United States, they're mostly grossly underfunded. Why is that? Why did we see drastic double-digit losses in 2008? Why is it that one of the greatest money managers in the world that outperformed the S&P for 15, 18, 20 years in a row was just fired because his five-year annualized return was negative 9.6%? Why is it that one of the greatest hedge fund managers, John Paulson, that shorted the subprime market and made billions for his millionaire clients, is showing returns over the last couple of years of negative 47, negative 50 percent in his Advantage Plus fund? Why is it that great minds like Meredith Whitney could be 100 percent wrong on where they thought municipal bonds would go? Or Bill Gross of PIMCO telling investors a year and a half, two years ago, sell your treasuries, interest rates are going up, only to see interest rates hit new all-time lows. What is the problem? We can send a person to the moon with precision accuracy, but we can't tell our clients with a high degree of probability they're going to hit the financial goals. Well, it all starts with how we model, how the financial community models and invests money. It really starts with the work of Dr. Markowitz and Dr. Bill Sharp in the mid-20th century with really what we call today modern portfolio theory. And what they said was that we can come up with the perfect asset allocation mix if we know three things. We call this asset class assumptions. If we know what the future return of an asset is going to be, if we know what the, the future risk of an asset is going to be, and if we know what the future correlation of the other assets or covariance or how the assets move in relation to other assets in the portfolio, it's called the correlation of the assets are going to be. If we can predict those three inputs, we can build the best and greatest, we can build the perfect portfolio. Well, there's the problem. If we could predict the future, we would know who win the Super Bowl and we'd all be rich. It's very hard to do. We're making assumptions, and we know what it means to make an assumption. So, if making an assumption puts us in a position that we could be wrong, and if we could blow up that pension, that endowment, that retirement plan, then is there a better way to model? Can we put inputs into the optimization model to where we don't care, and we don't have to predict the future return of an asset. We, we can, what if we could put tools into the optimization model that create stable correlation throughout all types of markets? We would actually be defining the risk today for tomorrow. There's only one way to do that, and it can be done. It's with the use of exchange-traded options and futures. That's the only way you can define risk today for tomorrow. So if we put these tools into our model as an asset class, a optimization that gives us a very smooth glide path no matter what the market does, it really diminishes the fact to make assumptions because we no longer have to assume anything. This is the magic of exchange-traded options. Thank you.